good morning and welcome to tea time. That's right, it's tea time with Miss Liz and we are doing morning tea. Why are we doing morning tea? You may ask, because we have a returning guest from 2020, a fellow peace ambassador for Nepal, who's joining me, who is a fellow brother of mine. So I really wanted to do something different for my returning guests. So all returning guests will be in the morning instead of afternoon and evening. So keep your eye open for that. So a little bit on Anjay. So Dr. Anjay Kumar Mishar is a doctorate in project management. He is an associate professor and research director at the Man Mandan Bur Burana Memorial Academy of Nepal. In the, and then the address is there. I, and I can't pronounce the address, Anjay, so I'll get you to say a little bit. Madan Bhandari Memorial Academy, Nepal. There we go. See, this is why he's my brother, because he helps me out. He is also regular visiting uh, faculty and DC supervisor at various colleges, such as United Technical College, uh, Institute of Engineering, uh, Management Science College. He is an editor in chief of DV Publication India and member of editor board of different international journals. He has been providing consulting services to many organizations such as Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, Nepal of Government, Breton Infra Tech, LLP, Prune, India. He, was, he has published more than 100 international peer review research papers and authored three international reference books. He has received many national and international awards for his excellency in research and academy academic sectors, such as the SAS Best Supervisor 2020, SAS Best Researcher 2019, Innovator Academic 2020, Best Research and Project Management, Young Scientist 2019, and so on. And one word that describes Anjay is innovate. In, in, innervate. <laughs> my tongue, my goodness, what is wrong with my tongue today? So welcome, Anjay. And it is an honor to have you back and to see your friendly face. It's been so long. Uh, we haven't seen each other in months. So uh, could you share a little bit on the importance of education and why you do what you do and who you are, NJ? You have defined me officially, but personally, I am a very simple human being. And I have progressed from village, uh, just engage myself in teaching in a very low cost college. Very low cost college in the sense in comparison to other colleges, we are providing same level of education almost on 50% of the fee. That's why I say very uh, low cost colleges. And in other sense, as of our college mission, no students can return from my college due to lack of their financial capacity only. So even poor students who does not have capacity to enroll for higher education, they can also get the benefit of different schemes provided by the college Madan Mandari Memorial Academy. That's why I was in big colleges, in rich colleges, but after that I migrated in a very remote, you can say, the education that has been provided by my institute, based on that, it's a remote, it's remote. So I have migrated to remote college from there. I just try to promote or contribute something what we can do in education sector. What I believe, change comes from education that's why just to bring some change we are engaged in education system otherwise for earning points of view education is not my uh, earning you can say i don't depend upon education for earning Edu education is not business for me it's just passion for me for earning i have been doing other like consulting services i have been providing from there i am earning to maintain my livelihood but education is just my hobby. That's why I'm engaged in teaching. Well, thank you so much, Anjay, for sharing that. Um, I really want to bring the importance of education in your country. What What are the challenges for the education system in, in Nepal? Yes. Uh, most of the youth are spending their quality life in education. Almost every individual till 25 years they are spending their life in education to obtain the degrees. But after obtaining the degree, they are not getting a certainty that once you have learned, you will get good earned. 
because the education which we are providing that's very quality education you, you can say in one sense but all the degree all the things we have been providing to our students that suits for international level since education has been developed in developing country and we are borrowing the theory we are borrowing the textbook we are borrowing the reference book we are copying the syllabus and teaching our students and our students are also learning each and everything like a parrot like a parrot they are learning whatever the things we are giving them but they are not in position to analyze what actually we are needing being very honest we are teacher but i feel that we are not uh, assure what our students should be taught what's the need of education over here that we have not perceived yet that's why our students are not guided by us properly what they need in field is one thing and what we provide them is another thing we provide the things that has been developed in foreign country that has been developed in developed country their education standard is very high but we are copying the same thing so our students are not compatible with the field condition what they should be provided so we are missing basically the need of education what's the real need of education in our college in our institution and in our university and in our nation that has not been identified yet we are just teaching them the theories developed by other country for other circumstances one thing one theory which has been developed in one nation might not be equally fitted for other nation ecological diversities are there but that that diversities has not been introduced in our education system is the biggest challenge you can say another thing we are asking everyone to read those who are not interested we are forcing them also to read to do their masters to the, do their bachelor if they are not interested to learn why should we force them to learn let them enjoy their life in any another way it's not that you have learned the book things and you have learned the education then only you can be very good by the skill also you can do the works so in our education system skill part is missing in every seminar and every university and every curriculum we keep talking that we will be providing skill and well it comes a matter to teach we have just uh, 45 hours 45 minutes class of one teacher and he is going in class and delivering the theories making them to learn and better theories are available right now in, in youtube so teachers are not much interested uh, teachers are not much capable to make their students sit in the class and they are complaining today the generation is misguiding the generation is uh, useless the generation is not fit but the problem with the teachers that we are not in capacity to provide them what our students are looking for what's their need so unless and until we cannot identify the real need we cannot make them to learn so major problem in one sentence i can say we are not in position to identify the need in any education unless need is not identify how can you offer them way of learning various way of learning and how can you make your students capable of doing the job that is only missing parts over here we have many universities here we have good universities also but that good university also providing the education in same way as the new university and university which does not have experience they are also providing education in the same way a university should focus on placement a university should focus on innovation but placement and innovation is still not focused yet still we are focusing on just theoretical parts that is the missing parts and uh, as one of the comment was coming really the teachers feel that i am very big people they are not very big people in the sense unless they don't bring their students very close to them how can they know what they really needs there is the gap i don't say that i teach very good but what i say i make their students learn very good i don't teach them but i make them to learn they learn by themselves every day new technologies are coming new knowledge is are coming how many days i can teach them to make the work so education should move from classroom to workplace and for that point of view a teacher is not sufficient to teach the students let the students have a habit to do self study so i never teach i make the students to do self study yes i create the environment where they can learn from one another if i teach i will teach one experience but the students are in a group of 30 and 40 students 
they are representing 30, 30, 40 places. They have 30, 40 different ideas. So let them discuss. Maybe my idea that will be copied from book because I will be delivering experience, but not imagination. And a student should be given a focus to imagine the things without imagination. What technology would come tomorrow? Nobody can guess. That's why if it is self-study, they can imagine the thing. Sometimes I ask them to do some assignment and being very honest, even I don't know what would be exact answer of it. Let the student try. Maybe they will find something new. If they will not find, I will also try to find. And with our combination, something comes. So they are they are I'm noticing a lot of comments that are coming in, NJ, and they're saying that you're a really good teacher, you're the best mentor, you're the best guider, you're a friend. You know, and I truly believe that in order to educate a child, you need to become a friend of that child. You need to understand what that child is really needing to learn. And I think that's what you do with your students because the comments that are coming in are really encouraging. And I think you are a good teacher. You teach very well. I think we undermine how well we teach the world in our own unique way, you know? You are a different kind of teacher, NJ. And you do make a difference because I'm watching the comments coming in and you do make a difference. You are empowering and you are inspiring these children and these adults, you know, these youths and that. So I really want to thank you for doing that and for being a teacher. Just thank you for your services because teachers don't get that acknowledgement. They don't get that thank you and appreciation. And I think we need to start appreciating teachers a lot more. One thing that I did notice when you were sharing was technology. Do you feel that now with technology so involved in children's lives, is it taking away from the learning aspect of reading and writing and under understanding do you feel as a teacher that technology is overrated or underrated technology is just a way how you are using every technology is good if you are using it and utilizing it in a positive way so i never blame for anything to the technology Every day, technologies are changing. So we should accept that technology and how can we utilize it? Even the time dynamite was invented, it was not supposed that a bomb would be developed with this dynamite. Alfred Nobel invented dynamite and his mission was not that uh, by this a bomb would be developed and maybe Nagasika, Hiroshima would be kept a bomb and there will be devastation and there will be terrorism. It was not his mission. His mission was to protect the humankind from the animal attack. So that technology, which supposed to be yours later on, even Alfred Nobel started to repent on his development, on his innovation, on his discovery. So even that technology was having positive side. So how you deal the technology that determines the positive or negative aspects of technology. One thing regarding a student's connection with the technology, technology is always good for the students. Now, sometimes we get afraid that maybe a technology would come and a teacher will be re replaced. No technology are going to be developed. No technology will be invented which can replace a teacher unless a teacher is ethical to teach. But some teachers are unethical. That's why teachers are getting blamed and getting afraid that may technology replace them. At least for teaching ethics, a teacher is needed. At least for teaching ethics, a teacher is needed. So a technology would come, a technology would be introduced in the market. It will overcome the vacuum or gap and maybe teacher would be replaced. But how you deal with the technology, that will be dealt by a teacher. So ethical parts is always going to be governed by the teacher and that decides the success or failure of a technology. Introducing a technology is not a big thing, but how it is utilized, that makes a lot of sense. A student should use as much as technology they are going to use. If you compare the education system of a developed country and developing country, you'll find the difference here only. In developing country like Nepal, we make the students to learn without technology. We ask them to do big, big sum on pen and paper, do big, big calculations on pen and paper to make their brain sharp. 
This makes their brain sharp. But while they come in a field, they have to work only one thing. Repeatedly, they have to do. And for doing that repetitive things also, they don't use technology like they don't use computer programming. They started to use pen and paper, which consumes a lot of time. And this makes the students ineffective. So a student must use technology. In developing country, we are under using the technology. Technology is not used yet as it should be used. Yes, for developed country, technologies are found to be used. For developed country, a big problem is what? Whatever technology they are using, they don't know the science behind that. They use just the technology. They use the application. You use application, it's very good. But if you are a higher education student, you must know what is the philosophy behind it. What is the principle behind it? What is the science behind it? So in developed country, students don't focus on science. Just they focus on application. In developing country, students focus only on science. They don't focus on technology. But it should be blending of technology and science. Then only a perfect human capital could be developed. Education system assumes that we should produce a human capital, not a manpower only. A manpower could be replaced with uh, robot and artificial intelligence, but human could human capital could not be replaced. So 21st century education or the future education should be in a way that what is to be done, they should learn and they can do. That's why in Nepal, I can't say that uh, technology is overused by the students, it's underused. Okay, we had a question come in, uh, Anjay. How do you define innovation? Yes, uh, multiple use of single thing is innovation for me. If one thing is there in your hand and you know how to use in different way, that becomes innovation for me. Innovation is all about, innovation is all about uh, making new idea commercialized. If something is a new idea, novel idea, and that could be commercialized, then it becomes innovation. And for making something commercialized, you must go back to use it in a multiple way. Just take an example of innovation, which I uh, most of the time I prefer to give. Washing machine. This is the real machine developed and uh, reduce the burden of women. Particularly before washing machine, women's one job used to be all the ladies were supposed to wash the clothes in developing country, particularly like Nepal, India, or SAR country, you can say. But after invention of this washing machine, if someone is getting a relief, it's female, it's ladies. But that washing machine in Punjab found to be used in different way, not only to wash the cloth, they are also using to convert the cord into, uh, you can say, mahi, mahi, it's called mahi, but I don't know what to call it in English. Uh, mahi, to convert that cord into another forms, they are using the same washing machine. So okay. it's one washing machine found to be used in two different way. That becomes innovation. That is innovation. Innovation does not mean always creating new things and big things. Innovation could be a small thing, but that should bring some positive impact on your life. That should bring some positive changes to society. That also becomes innovation. Like one social scientist of Nepal has given one thing, include the excluded, include the excluded. After that, this small thing brought such a changes in Nepal that uh, in every constitution, everywhere, they are talking about inclusiveness, inclusiveness. But it was one line, include the excluded, those who are not in education system, introduce them in education system, those who are apart from the services, those who are not in connection with the government, let them bring in the connection of government, one line. But it is also innovative. Include the excluded is also innovation. So innovation does not mean big thing. It could be a small thing, but it should bring some changes and that can be commercialized. Very important that you have a good idea. You have very beautiful ideas, but unless and until you are not going to explore it into society, unless and until society is not going to adopt it, it could not be said innovation. 
so a scientific things could not be innovative till a commercial uh, flavor is not given to that scientific invention so i always focus whatever new let the society accept it and enjoy it that is innovation for me when we have another question here can you see the questions anjay yes what are the technological changes that can be done to enhance current education system in nepal at very first the first technological changes that we can bring on examination system what are we doing we are testing the memory power of the students from primary level to phd masters we are taking examination on pen and paper due to this covid some of the universities are extending their exam schedule but they are not introducing innovative exam time in innovative exam system examination written examination just is just a war for 3 hours 4 hours between pen and paper a students learn only 10 questions out of that seven questions asked in examination he will score 70% marks another students who learn 100% of the book but he has just missed to learn five questions and that five questions has been asked in examination he would not score good marks so examination is only a pen paper test as of our examination system yes in theory we are saying that we are conducting this activity summative examination formative examination but in practice we all teachers are focused only on final examination on pen and paper test so the first thing different way of examination is to be introduced the second thing technology things the students who are failing in one subject and passing in another subject just remove that subject few of our students who are really good but if their english is poor they are not in position to participate in technical education since technical education is still in nepal is in english medium only we are not teaching our doctors in nepali we are not te uh, teaching our engineers in nepali it's not the student faults it's our fault because we have learned from english book and it was written in english so we have learned it and we are just transferring the same thing we are not in position to do exactly the same thing in nepali that's why that's why we are not in position to make them learn in another way so options should be given to the students in whatever languages they feel comfortable to learn technology let them learn the technology it's important to learn the application of education and it's important to learn the technology of education not the theory only of the education how it was written still in final examination it's engineering copy and we will be checking a spelling if there is a spelling error we will be cutting if the sense is already clear and we come to know that these students can perform in field why should you deduce the marks why should you deduce the marks even if english is wrong it's language only it's matter of communication only he can communicate in any way to his client and if he can do his job who are we to hinder them so first thing examination system should be developed and we should introduce some of the questions from application parts some of the questions from memory parts and some of the questions from high analytical powers as well and another technological change is to be brought the teacher should be hired in two way in nepal nepalese education system one for research and another for teachers those who are having very high qualifications and very good researchers they are not good in teaching only few are exceptions that's different things those who are very good in teaching on the basis of them only the result of the college depends they are not good in research and we have we have been treating both of them in one basket that's why a good teacher a good researcher is also not getting reputation as a good teacher a good teacher is also not getting respect as his research part is, part is weak at the time of evaluating the performance performance we are evaluating their research we are evaluating their class performance so once if a teacher is interested to conduct a research let him enjoy the research and he will be teaching through demonstration method through demonstration method means he will be engaging the students in his project and through the project a project based learning could be passed and a teacher who is very good with marker on the board or you can say powerpoint in the class let them teach through the powerpoint and don't press him to follow the 
part uh, to participate in research also what is happening happening currently in nepal few of the good teacher who has been teaching the subject since last 20 year he is not getting promotions he, he has not been found to be promoted because his research part is weak he has not contributed in research but he has been teaching since 20 years he should be given respect he should be promoted sometime his students is being his boss through the promotion through the quick promotion because he is engaged in research maybe his research is not good but whatever he is teaching that is excellent then why don't we promote them so there there should be two type of teacher in university mm -hmm. examination system should be changed after that only and project based learning philosophy should be given these are the few changes that should be brought and even as students if you compare nepalese education system only 20% is outcome whatever we are investing only 20% are resulting the number of students who are entering in class 8 and the number of students who are passing from class 12 they are only 20% 80% are found to be lost within these 4 years and for those 80% we don't have any provisions we give them a blame that these students are useless they are not going to do anything in the life later on some of them are going to be brilliant so unless and until we don't find the differences in the students till that time education would not be effective system could not be set sufficient enough so we have another, we have another question here angie for you uh yes uh, sometime it happens but it's not that it's innovation that uh, promotes this type of things it's the people who are using it same students who are learning in same class one is having positive mindset he will be doing the things for positive points of view on other things he will be doing for negative points of view bum is a technology that used for positive points of view also and bomb are found to be used for negative points of view also by the terrorist so it's not we cannot blame innovation for that points of view we should blame the people who are dealing it with exactly the people who are dealing with this innovations innovation is needed everywhere but our system some, sometimes makes frustrated to the innovators innovator bring some new idea but society does not accept society creates the discrimination in this respect he became frustrated and he started using the same technology in different way that becomes devastation so for that points of view i cannot say that uh, it's innovator who are a scammers yes for scamming also you need a brain that's why that's why you must be innovator but all innovators are not eskimo <laughs> yes how can we support local startup ecosystem for starting anything we have to just do five things and this question if you ask with any professor might be the answer would not be correct since professor delivers the experience not imagination as i have said earlier also imagination should be created by the people who are thinking for a startup yes ecosystem would be taught by a professor so a professor can make you to understand what is your surrounding how you can deal with your surrounding and if you can identify the need of your ecosystem at very first go and analyze what your ecosystem is really looking for then generate 100 idea ideas then generate 100 ideas how can you fulfill the need of your ecosystem then pick one or two best idea after doing a lot of analysis financial analysis environmental analysis social analysis or technological analysis pick one or two best idea experiment it in a small group and if you find it is success then go for a startup then then only go for a startup sometimes what happens we don't try to learn and just we start our startup even for riding a cycle you fall 10 times and you get two three gurus two three teachers 
who teach you how to drive a cycle even for us riding a cycle a small thing but for doing a startup you don't want to learn you don't want to learn for swimming if i will teach you how to make your body straight and how to keep your leg you will never be in position to swim for swimming you should learn by watching you should learn by doing so a startup could be also learned by doing a startup could be also established by doing so first thing identify the need then take the lead in the area after generating new idea comparing with others you should do in a way that you are fulfilling the need of society you are fulfilling the need of society this way if you can identify the ecosystem and best thing how you are creating the relationship the universe depends upon relationship so ecosystem also is all about creating a relationship if you can create a symbiotic relation and even if you are giving some poor product your customer will be advising you to improve it but if you are not in a position to create the relationship and providing best product also they will be criticizing you so it depends upon you how you are dealing it without looking the situation i cannot suggest how to start a startup okay anjay do you think universities and students are adding value through education in nepal it's a very tough question to answer strictly if i'll say education system is not adding value definitely technology has been changed definitely market has been changed and a lot of people are running behind education so i cannot say education system is not adding value but i cannot say education system is adding value also value for me is whatever is your input based on that if you are earning more output then you can say education system is adding value in nepalese education system whatever students are learning in class they are never getting chance to use in the job they are never getting a chance to use in their job life so whatever they are learning in class that is only for their mental training so up till some extent all the worker all the employee all the human resource should be mentally trained for that for that points of view education system is adding value but if we compare with the output the values are not added as we are expecting we are spending 25 years of a man in education just we are making them to dream after this 25 years another 25 years you are going to have a bright future but they find just they are in class 1 while they started doing the job again they are going in training and learning all the times because the time we are teaching we never teach them that always you will be facing new problem in your life and whenever you are getting problem solve like this we never give them we just make them to solve a case or a case study which we have solved till it is 25 years everything has changed still we will be using same textbook same theories then i uh, it could not be said that value has been really added yes to add the value what we can do we can break the courses into three parts some of the basic things that has to be taught after that some of the things that has to be make them to do and learn and something that them imagine unless and until students are not getting imaginary value they would not be in position another things in nepalese education system those who have never done something they will be teaching the things for example if someone has not sold even a single pen also he will be teaching marketing he will be teaching marketing in his life he has not sold even a single pen also so what can he teach what can he teach so at very first the people who are not having professional experience they should not be allowed to teach in classroom most of us are being teacher because we are not getting in, in we are not getting any other job and we are very good in writing our english is also good then we are being teacher so what we expect with this type of teacher let the teacher to do the same job in the field and then ask them to deliver the things whatever they have seen with their eyes let the student to close their eyes and make the students to view the world with your own experience eye then you can say i am teaching good things or i am a good teacher but just you can make a survey in nepal 
80 percent teachers are those who have not been in field they are the teacher of the same subject if i am teaching project management and i have not seen real project how can i teach project management exactly if i have seen project management i have involved myself in project management then it will be like telling a story to my students so for me teaching project management would not be a burden because every day i am telling same story so i'll ask my students you close your eyes i will show you how the project get managed so for me also it's not burden to prepare homework and do a lot of things go and enjoy our teaching for a students also it will be enjoying that's why teaching makes the teacher young only if he is trained to teach otherwise teaching becomes a big burden for me if you give me 10 class i don't mind because i have to teach what i have done by myself i don't have to read from the book and teach yes something is to be read from the book then i will ask the students show me the book what is written over there i'll learn with them i will learn along with my students maybe they will read it and interpret it better than me so i will learn with them in that case i will learn with them but whatever i have seen in project whatever i am seeing in project every day that i will be delivering to them this way teaching should be a two way process not one way but here it's totally one way that's why i personally believe teaching or education system is not adding much value in nepal it needs a lot of improvement and and i strongly agree with you with that anjay when you say you know don't teach if you haven't done it if you if you have no experience how can you teach right yes. you're te you're teaching just out of nowhere and what is the lesson? What are, what's the lesson that you are giving to another person if you have not yourself learned it? You know, and I say that all the time. Unless you live it and you learn it, you can't teach it. You know, and 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 that's what I do with tea time. Is I teach tea. I I teach you to understand who you are, who your cup is, right? And that and that's why I have my guest on tea time is for them to understand who they are and what they do. And Anjay here is an incredible man and he does make a difference because I do see the comments coming from your students and from people from your country and that. And Anjay, I want you to tell us what your tea is and what does tea mean to you? It's my turn to teach you. <laughs> yes. Early in the morning when I woke up and if I do anything constructive, I feel that today my job is done. Like if I am getting early in the morning and even if I am creating one paragraph or I am thinking to do one experiment that helps me to feel good and energized whole day. And tea is just to take you or get you awake up. Tea is something uh, that contains tannin and tannin makes you makes your brain alert all the times. So for me, if I am creating something, if I am constructing something, if I am developing something and making a document or just I am asking any students, why don't you do like this? Uh, most of my students are engaged in uh, master's thesis. They come, come across me early in the morning and I also ask them, call me in the morning. While they make a call, I just suggest them, do like this. After saying that, the satisfaction which I get whole day that is sufficient for me to work in my field and regarding that if i get anything to learn if any experienced people in the sector if i get i started asking and seeing the literature these are the things a tea for me any construction in the morning any development in the morning any innovation in the morning is tea for me so if i give you the letter t e a could you give me a word for each letter See, I have seen your tea meaning, but that I don't deliver. If I deliver the things, then it will not create the new things. So let us, rather than defining it currently, I will text you through a message by thinking what's exactly this TEA for me. Maybe truthful, engaging in activity, activities. Truthful engagement for activities is tea for me. And that is your tea, Anjay. That is that is tea for me. And that, and, I, and I will text you why why this is your tea after. 
And there's a reason why I ask all of my guests what TEA means to them, because it comes from within you. I can't tell you what your T is. You can only tell me what your T is, NJ. You can only teach me your life. I can't teach you your life. So when I say when we serve our T's, we serve our own lives. And it's like you, as a professor, you teach your students in a way that they learn through the way that you've learned and the way that you do your research in that and the experiences that you have. And that's why your T is what it is today, you know, and the difference that you are making today. So we do have a few more questions that are coming in. So I'm going to pop them up for you. Yes. What is innovation management? Whatever the things that you can commercialize for empowering the society, simply that is innovation management. Not doing big things, do a small thing, but bring the changes. That is innovation for you. Don't create new resources, but whatever resources are with you, use in a multiple way to create the benefits to add the value. So any value adding process or the way you can add value, that becomes innovation management for me. It might be different with the textual book, which he is maybe he is expecting from me, but I always prefer to give something new. For me, whatever the things by doing that value is created in your social supply chain, that becomes innovation. That becomes innovative management for me. So use the resources in most of its optimal way to draw the positive outcomes. That is innovation management. You see example of any companies, what they are doing. They are just adding some value. They are adding some value to society. This program also making a difference is adding some value. That's why it's also innovative management. So anything could be innovative management if you are really adding value to the process. Sometimes, sometimes you just spend the time, but at the end you find that value is not added. That could not be said innovative management. So just try to focus on value addition process. In a supply chain, if you can add value, then that becomes innovative management as well. In Nepal, sometimes farmers feel that there is no innovation, but if value would be added, there will be also innovation. Methods of teaching in Nepal in policy making are somehow good, but in the implementation, implementation it is very weak, especially in government school level. In your point of view, how can we improve this? At very first, government schools are having more resources than private schools. But government schools, teacher and system has created a hume that they will be working with their salary only for 5%. And 95% of their effort they use for earning extra 10%. Whatever payment is made by the government, that is only for 5% to make the attendance. Rest, they are using their whole efficiency for ex gratia, for earning extra incomes. There is the problem. Unless and until a teacher would not be rated on a scale like academic performance index or something name could be given that in how many project teachers are contributing, how many of their students are creating innovation. But nowadays, teacher has started saying in classroom, prepare for PSC, prepare for public service commission. Since schooling only, they are asking their students to teach them just to do the public service commission jobs, but not innovation. So in policy level, whatever policy is made, Really, that's good. At implementation, make one simple change. Rate your teacher's performance, not connecting to politics, but based on their outcomes. How many students he has really taught? How many students of his school is really engaged in creating the value for the society? Is really doing entrepreneurship? Is really creating the job? And how many of them are serving for the nation by doing the job? or how many of them are just trying to search the job for five years 
by getting admission in a coaching and after that he is getting one job of clerk and feeling that yes i am very big man so this way just a performance rating should be developed for all the teachers from school to university level from school to university level and they should be rated they should be ranked and few of the salary should be given for their sustainability and 50% of salary should be given on the basis of target if the teachers are making their students to learn and making difference they should be given 50% of their salary as a motivation and 50% of the salary should be given just for their livelihood maintenance this way a competition should be brought a healthy competition should be brought among the teachers but once teacher are getting job in government school he thinks my job is over next time i don't have to appear in any exam why should i read and they started they started serving the local politician to be head teacher and to be at a higher position so this culture is to be changed and for changing the culture through the policy we can make few intervention like academic performance index like we can include that how many projects have been conducted by the teachers in the society this way we can bring the change a teacher who will who may you find to teach this uh, professional life subjects since 30 years he would not be in position to do the same thing he will be teaching agriculture since last 30 years but he would not be in position to do any activities of agriculture and one man who has been doing agriculture since 30 years he would be knowing maybe he will not know how to tell the things but he would be knowing everything he would be knowing everything so they are the real teacher the teacher whom we believe are the real teacher are fake teacher the teacher who which, who can demonstrate by doing they are the real teacher so a teaching system should be developed in a way that uh, those who are bringing changes in the society they should be brought in some way in connection of the school and the school teacher should be also taken sometime in the field so they can interchange their knowledge in a healthy way to contribute for the social changes this system should be developed through the policy intervention of academic performance ranking like things so how other than academic institutions are performing for innovation other than academic institution there are few scientific associations and there are few scientific agencies established by government of nepal like nepal academy of science and technology nepal agriculture nark uh, they are doing related to agriculture research and many other institutions are there they are engaged in research they you find if you talk with these peoples who are in higher rank they will be saying government does not provide us fund that's where we are not innovative but at the end of physical year you find their fund has been frozen their fund has not been utilized because they could not experiment it they could not invent it and most of their most of their currencies are found to be utilized in tada only uh, daily traveling and daily allowances only so this all says that they don't have clear vision that's why they are missing yes somehow nark is nark is contributing as well because it's related to agriculture maybe they are not doing direct experiment but at least the technology or systems developed in other country they are bringing it and testing and providing the society so they are contributing but other agencies they are taking very like uh, this uh, policy research institute it's a institute to conduct the research of the related to policy only but you find they they will be doing only questionnaire survey their research tool is only to conduct ask with the people and document it's one way to conduct the research but it's not every way to conduct the research so unless and until they will not uh, develop their own research capacity how can you assume that they are doing very good research in university every year i think uh, several i can't say in number but several students are submitting their phd masters bachelor thesis work in all of them they are working a lot 
but at the end findings are same one and same so all the people over here on name of research are putting old wine in new bottle so in nepal whatever expenditure are there in research that all is about keeping old wine in new bottle they are changing only the flavor but doing the same thing that's why i can't say that only academic institutions are not doing good every institutions need to make some improvement and innovation does not come on a time scale so the big problem in our policy we give them one fiscal year budget in one financial year they have to spend everything and maybe he has to think for year and year so it should be extended but we don't have provision like that that's why policy is also not giving a lot of space to do some scientific experiment and some scientific activities also and in other hand we are not getting faith of the society that if we are doing some experiment it will bring some changes to society that's why also a lot of problems are there if we conduct some action research if we conduct some action research then there could be a lot of scope i don't suggest here to conduct uh, that basic research because for conducting basic re basic research we need a lot of fund but action research just to solve a problem we can conduct a quick research and do it but that also we are doing using questionnaire survey i find some universities they are providing degree of uh, engineering by asking questions and making pie chart and bar graph and they are saying we are the best university of nepal and we are providing engineering degree so these are some weaknesses but few universities are good also few non academic institutions are doing very good also so i can't keep all the institution in one basket it depends upon the people around by it but everywhere political interference uh, interference is very high if you are a scientist and you are doing work on one project and government get changed then maybe your position would be also collapsed then your experiment would be incomplete and sometime that people could be uh, losing their brain capacity also because he has totally involved in one experiment all of a sudden he has been shifted from there what he will be doing so it all depends upon political cycle how the people are doing their activities so at very first politics should be very neutral and they should not touch the scientific institution then only they can run but in university all the vc will be political appointed and from there only a political cycle started to bring earthquake once political changes takes place in our economy that's the big problem of any developing country so any final words before we wrap up your tea time anjay to the students that are watching and to the viewers that are watching and if you're watching on the replay please put replay in and if you have any questions please send them into the comment box and i will get them off to anjay so any final words before we wrap up yes at very first i am thankful to students particularly who even tolerate me even if i get angry sometime they tolerate me uh, but that's my strategy somehow to make them learn sometime i ask them politely learn and learn then they just started ignoring once i put the words of pressure then they come in size and they started doing the things something i feel that if they can learn by themselves better that chapter i don't discuss i just say i am not very good in this you just read it and let me know and really i find sometimes students are doing very good in those chapters so even if i am not teaching i am carrying them i think that i am uh, what you teach that does not make sense how much you care them to learn that makes a lot of sense that's why i don't say that i am good or bad but what i say i am different maybe like i am bad in some case maybe i am good in some case but i am not copy of others i am a new version of myself i never adopt a lot of things from others what i do that's my own way and i am thankful to students who always support me in doing the things that's why they bring good results also they bring good results also Uh, the, my current affiliation as full time faculty in uh, very remote for conducting masters of engineering and the students from there also are doing very good some of my friends sometime ask with me what they do how they appear in exam so they are doing like this i said they are learning by themselves that's why 
they have digested the educations and you people are teaching a lot so your students are vomiting the educations yeah. if you eat a lot and don't digest then you will not get energy if you eat, if you eat little but you digest it you will get energy so my students are getting energy by doing self exercise your students are getting a lot of good quality foods but after eating their enzymes are not working and they are doing vomiting that's why they are feeling weaker this way also i defend sometime to the students so at end i would like to wish healthy and prosperous life in this covid health first safety first should be prioritized keep yourself safe do lockdown or do whatever but be safe first health is best thing what i have given to you so you take care of your health and uh, be healthy in this covid or in all situation keep your body also healthy and mind also healthy for keeping your mind healthy you do a study and learn but for keeping your body healthy you do health exercise if any problem contact medical doctors but be healthy so wish you a very healthy life this is what i would like to express through you and thank you to you also well thank you so much anjay for joining me today on tea time and coming back and being my first returning guest from last year i really appreciate that and just seeing your friendly face again was really nice to see you so if anybody would like to know more about anjay please check out anjay uh, I will put in the links on contacting him and all that. Uh, one final question before, and I know I'm going to go over my hour time, but I want to ask this question to you, Anjay. Do you teach outside of Nepal? Yes, I teach outside of Nepal also. I teach in India. Okay. And uh, even through online teaching, I teach in Indonesia. Uh, even sometime as external examiner, I'm visiting Indonesian universities and Indian universities. As a PhD examiner also, I have offered to examine, I have got a chance to examine the students of Indian university as well. Uh, so even out of Nepal, in Malaysia also, I have uh, conducted some online classes, but physically I'm teaching in, you can say half part of Nepal, because one college is situated at one place, another is an at another place, and uh, just to learn, I'm interacting with them and visiting them. So in half part of Nepal, I have been teaching my subject, you can say. But in India, even in National Institute of Construction Management and Research Center, SRM, then a uh, few South Indian engineering colleges also, I have been teaching, depending upon modular courses, elective courses, whenever I'm getting chance, I'm utilizing myself I'm not teaching only for earning, I'm teaching to learn. If I'm going at new places and teaching, then they are providing me some books written by their teachers. They are uh, getting, they are giving me chance to evaluate the project works conducted by their students. That's totally new for me. This way, for learning aspects, I'm more engaged in teaching at different places. I, and I, I really wanted to just throw that last question in there because I want people to understand that it's not just, just in Nepal that you are teaching. So for anybody that would like to know more on Anjay, please reach out to me, Miss Liz. Check out my Facebook page, Miss Liz's Tea Times, Making a Difference. And I will see everyone next week with a new guest where I bring in a unique kind of different kind of charity fundraiser. I'm bringing in the fund donor. So yeah, if you want to know more about the fund donor, and uh, check him out. I, I will be uh, sharing some of his stuff shortly in a little bit. So Anjay, thank you again for joining me for tea. It is an honor again. And stay in touch and we will connect again. And I will see you again at the end of the year for the reunion show with all of the guests for 2021. So again, thank you all. And if you're watching replay, please put it in the replay. And if you have any suggestions at all for Miss Liz's Tea Times, please send them my way. I am very open to having different and unique different things on Tea Time. Like Anjay said, he's different. He serves and teaches differently. And I like that. I like the word different because that's what we do. We make a difference by being different. So again, thank you. And I will see you all next week for a new Tea Time with Miss Liz.